Hello guys, Solitaire Gamer here, and today I'll be reviewing Season 1 of Nura Rise of the Yokai Clan. This is a battle show anime series that has long been forgotten. It used to be somewhat popular many years ago, but now no one recommends it or even talks about it. I was hesitant early on about watching this anime series because, from what I heard about it, the protagonist is a weak and spineless protagonist. But when he transforms once in a while, he turns to a cool character. I didn't want to put myself through watching a spineless protagonist most of the time, but I gave this anime series a chance and watched the entire first season. After watching the first season, I can say the protagonist is not that bad, and actually had good character development. In this anime series, the protagonist Rikuo is set to be the next leader of the Nura clan, which is a powerful yokai clan. There is only one problem. Rikuo has no interest in being a leader, and just wants to live life as a normal human. Not only that, but he's only one fourth yokai, which means he can't transform and use his yokai powers until it's nighttime. So during the day, he's practically defenseless. Even with how weak he is, there are still those who believe in him and will follow him no matter what. There are other members of the Nero clan who seem as weak and doubt his ability to lead the Nero clan. Because of that, Riku almost faced many yokais that plan to kill him and take control of the clan. Right away, what draws you to watch this show is Riku's yokai form. His yokai form looks so cool and his power is so destructive and unique. What keeps you watching the show, though, is Rico's development into becoming a strong leader. I'm honestly shocked. I thought Rico was going to stay as a spineless loser throughout the anime series, but I realized he couldn't run away from responsibilities as next leader of the Nero clan, because he'll be laying down so many people. He learned to speak up like a true leader and guide people to victory. He learned to protect himself from a yokai during the day. He wouldn't just rely on his yokai form. He became an inspiration for his people, and it was like he was becoming one with his yokai self. This is everything to ask for in terms of character development. People don't want to see an overpowered protagonist. They want to see a protagonist grow stronger over time as both as a fighter and as a person. And the anime series gave you just that. The plot was intriguing to watch. It was basically about power struggle within the Nero clan, as people want to recall out of the clan, so that they could control the clan. There was a lot of interesting scheming and playing involved. It was enjoyable seeing Rico see through his opponent's strategies and come up with a way to ruin their plan. The fight's pretty entertaining watching this anime series. The yokais each had unique transformations and powers. Plus, strategy was made important during the fights, so you won't see a power friendship power appear, which is a good thing. The ending to this anime series is just so chaotic and entertaining to watch. Many yokais fight against each other in all out war. That's as good as it gets. There were a couple issues with fight scenes though. Early on, the fights ended way too quickly but that was much of an issue later on. The other issue was that in the final battle, Rikuo won in a very convenient way, by using a technique that was not really foreshadowed beforehand. It seemed like the anime series just hadn't come up with a new technique out of nowhere. It wasn't that frustrating to watch, but it's a pretty weird way to end a major fight. In terms of Rikuo as protagonist, of course he was a great protagonist. Like I said earlier, he had the best character development I've seen from protagonist in a long time. The other characters were intended to watch as well. Oikawa, also known as Yuki Ona, was a great female character that was so loyal to Rikuo. She wanted to protect him no matter what. She had such a good uplifting personality. She brought a lot of positive energy to the show, and character design was good as well. Yura was an interesting Kudir. It was funny seeing him be so suspicious of Rikuo's true identity, and she was pretty close to fire as well. She had a unique ability where she could summon Shikigami to fight for her. Kana was a typical child friend that was known at times whenever she got upset that Rikuo was too close to Orikawa. She didn't really add much value to the show. She couldn't fight, and was not funny or entertaining to watch at all. I know many people will hate Kuyo Sugu, but I found it entertaining to watch with how much you want to see the supernatural up close. The opening and ending song were decent in its first season. The music was very nice here during the fight scenes, it got you excited to watch it. The anime style looked alright, and the anime looked good during fight scenes. The anime series was able to animate Rikuo's attacks very well. I was very shocked by how good this anime series was. Here I was expecting a rant about how much of a loser the protagonist was. But he actually had good character development throughout, and overall the fight scenes were entertaining to watch. I give this first season a 8 out of 10. So that's all I'm going to talk about for this video. Thank you for watching this video. Have a great day night wherever you are, and please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and please comment if you found anything interesting in the video.